its pericarp. The seven oceans respectively contain salt water, sugarcane juice, liquor, clarified butter, milk, emulsified yogurt, and sweet drinking water. Sometimes Vedic cosmology is misconstrued as portraying the earth to be a flat disk. This flat earth misconception arises partly due to our inability to understand Vedic nomenclature. A single object may be referred to by several names, and a single name may refer to several objects. For example, the term earth may be used to describe at least six different aspects of cosmology. The earth we live on is indeed a globe as explained by the Sanskrit word parimandale, meaning spherical, used in the Mahabharata text. The flat disk refers to the greater earthly planetary system of Bhumandala. Four elephants of inestimable size are placed at the four directions for balancing the greater earth. Below the earthly planetary system are seven subterranean realms named Atala, Vitala, Sutala, Talatala, Mahatala, Rasatala, and Patala, which do not receive sunlight and which are inhabited primarily by demoniac living entities. To reach the first one, one must go 80,000 miles downward through underground tunnels. At successive depths of 80,000 miles are the remaining six nether worlds, all of which are fully developed underground civilizations. In the fourth level downward, Talatala Loka, lives the magical architect Maya Danava, who has designed many brilliantly decorated cities where proud materialists reside. Below the nether worlds are the 28 hellish planetary systems. The demigod of justice, Yamaraj, judges the unrighteous human beings after their deaths and sends them to one of these planets. There, errant souls are administered appropriate punitive measures corresponding to their misdeeds. The earthly and subterranean planetary systems rest upon one of the hoods of the gigantic divine serpent, Shesha. Shesha in turn is held up by the colossal transcendental tortoise, Kurma. And Kurma resides in the ocean that fills half the universe. We had the great stalwarts in Kerala like uh, Madhava, who gave infinite series formulae for uh, sine, cosine, pi, nearly two centuries before Newton was born to teach calculus to the world. Albert Einstein also recognized the contribution of Vedic mathematics to science. We owe a lot to the Indians who taught us how to count, without which no worthwhile discovery could have been made. Vedic cosmological knowledge is revealed in two primary texts, namely the Puranas and the Jyotisha. Among the Jyotisha texts, the Surya Siddhanta is prominent and gives precise mathematical formulae for calculating planetary motions. The Surya Siddhanta contains extraordinary astronomical calculations which predate modern science itself. However, many contemporary scholars have been unable to understand Puranic cosmology. Nevertheless, detailed studies of both texts show that their foundational astronomical principles are identical. For instance, both calculate atomic time as the time it takes for the sun to pass over an atom. Similarly, both texts calculate the frequency of planetary revolutions in terms of their retrograde motion 
with respect to the Zodiac. Furthermore, the apparent contradictions between the two texts are resolved by using the formula for converting the actual distances recorded in the Puranas into angular velocity stated in the Jyotisha. This Surya Siddhanta, originally spoken ages ago by Surya, the sun god, was translated and commented upon in the 20th century by the brilliant astronomer named Bhimala Prasad Siddhanta Sarasvati. Vedic thought should be preserved. If you are not able to interpret, someone will interpret at a later stage. After a millennium, let someone come and interpret. We have to preserve that. The Vedic thought, Vedic knowledge has to flow from generation to generation. I feel that there should be a planetarium strictly according to Vedic cosmology. And once the planetarium is constructed, probably at least we will give a chance to those people to comment upon it and uh, to discard it or to accept it, etc. Vedic planetarium uh, apparently differ, appears to be different from the ideas of the modern scientists. But what is more important is whether Vedic planetarium idea by itself is scientific. If it is scientific, the modern scientists will have to revise their ideas about their own planetarium. And this planetary is required on all these things. You know, a vast knowledge of the universe and so much for so many people. So you are only, you are the only, not only the person to enjoy, you will allow all others to know about it. So that is really a commendable work and has to be done. It's a concept of anatorium, according to our Bhagavatam. So a Westerner who is wise, and who is uh, after uh, discovery, certainly he will be interested in this. There is a famous proverb, one figure is worth a uh, thousand words. I think I can explain this proverb, one model is worth a thousand figures. <laughs> Even if you put a number of figures, you will not uh, get the uh, correct uh, picture. So if you consider a three-dimensional model, then certainly you can uh, perceive things better. Albert Brush Ford, the great-grandson of automobile magnate Henry Ford, speaks about how he became involved with the Vedic planetarium. I, uh... I was in Detroit in 1976. We had purchased the Bhakti Nanta Cultural Center. And uh, had spent uh, a year getting it fixed up, and Prabhupada came for a visit. And so it was his first visit there, and he was uh, entertaining some guests up in his room at the Cultural Center. And he was explaining to them about the Vedic planetarium. And so after he talked to them for a while, he turned to me and he said, uh, so how do you like this idea about the Vedic planetarium? I said, that's a very nice idea, so probably, because it sounds like a very interesting idea. And so he said, kind of half-jokingly, okay, you can help finance. You know, and then would, we all laughed, myself and some of the other devotees had to laugh. But just at that moment, someone took a picture. So I had, at home, I have that picture sitting on my desk. So at that moment, probably I planned to see that I should be involved in helping to finance the Temple of Eddie Planetarium. So 30 years later, here I am.